Welcome back, everybody, to another post-commentary feature match. We've got Danger Orcus on the left versus Rocket Ships on the right. That's right, Cosmo Rocket. He told me to call it Rocket Ships, so I guess I have to. But here we are in round three, so if you guys are ready for this uh, interesting feature match. Before we get into it, I want to mention a quick shout-out to our sponsor at Imperium Duelist. If you guys are interested in picking up that playmat there on the left, or any sleeves, dice, calculator cases, etc., use that discount code WINNERKILLS10 or WINNERKILLS10 OFF at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. Uh, help support me in the process and help save you guys a little money. So we're going to get started here with this match here. A uh, little bit of a pile shuffle going on. Uh, and Cosmo, uh, a.k.a. Rocket Ships, winning the dice roll, opting to go first, uh, and starting things off with a tin can. So far, a pretty productive turn. I mean, as far as Cosmo is concerned, anyways. He's going to pay five, set one backer, of course. And uh, it's going to be met with an Ash Blossom, so a pretty solid counter there to stop the uh, the wind can, if you will. Allure of Darkness going to be played to start things off for our Orcus player here. And uh, going to banish a Phantasme. As you'll see, it's probably not uh, going to be that useful. A little bit of an Earthquake here. Tripod always getting kicked into oblivion. I apologize for that. Uh, literally just a, a kicking bag, a punching bag sometimes. Um... But it is just, it's just the setup we have to work with currently. Um, Upstart Goblin going to be played now. I'm going to give him back some of those life points he paid earlier. Unfortunately, I had to banish a Harp Horror off of that lure, but it looks like it drew him into some pretty good cards here. Armageddon Knight perhaps being one of them. Dumping another Harp Horror to the graveyard. Have to use that effect. Two Harp Horrors down. Looks like there is an Orcus Nightmare in his hand. Uh, could be wrong, though. Going to summon out Orcus Nightmare. Opponent does have one set back row, though. Will it be a key part of interruption here, or is it just a bluff? Looks like he does have Symbol Skeleton uh, and a Orcus Nightmare in his hand. So he's going to go ahead and chain, actually, that Tin Can. Summon out Dark Destroyer and destroy that Armageddon Knight, which will prevent him from linking into Galatea. And end phase, we'll see Trap Trick. That is really unfortunate. The hand is that bad. Cannot even get another Dark on board, another monster on board, rather, just to go into Galatea. Um, but, of course, Trap Trick is going to go for Cosmojo, which will uh, destroy Dark Destroyer, banish the Nightmare, allowing Dark Destroyer to summon out Cosmo Slip Rider will pop that set Climax, which is a bluff, but uh, it's actually pretty good that he decided to set that, because if it does go to the graveyard, he'll be able to get some value out of it through a search during his opponent's next turn. Um, so a bit of a heads-up play there on behalf of the Orcus player. Um, but, you know, you got to take a little bit of a risk, and the risk sort of paid off here because it will allow him to get a search later on. So he will have Cosmo Town up here, which is pretty good. He'll pay the 8 to go ahead and get that Dark Destroyer back. And here he's going to normal summon a Rocket Monster. Um, I think that might be like Rocket Recharge uh, or Recharge Rocket. Either way, going to link it into a copy of Striker Dragon. It's going to go ahead and destroy Cosmo Town now as a result to add back that rocket that he just linked off for. Striker Dragon being a very good card. Actually, no, going to destroy the Slip Rider and not the Cosmo Town. So he'll get that bit of a bit of a synergy here. The whole reason why we're even seeing rocket ships in this video to begin with. Uh, and then it looks like a Farm Girl on his side of the field. He'll pay five after swinging in with the, uh, I believe, some damage here. Dropping him down uh, just by a bit. Take the 15 from the uh, farm girl and then a bit of damage from the striker dragon as well. Not a whole lot of damage here, but uh, going to be able to resolve the farm girl though. He'll pay the 5 after dealing some battle damage to add dark destroyer and then he'll chain the dark destroyer and blow up dark destroyer. To be able to summon out another body, it's going to be the Dark Lady, and then he'll swing in with that for even more damage. Uh, so he's dropped down pretty low here, 3,300 after all is said and done. End phase is going to come around. He's going to go ahead and use that orchestrated climax with the crescendo now to go ahead and banish it, add a Dark Machine from deck to hand. He's going to go ahead and add that simple skeleton. He just needs to get two monsters on board, one including an Orcus. Same strategy still applies pre-mermaid as it does post-mermaid. 
uh, or well, mermaid was legal. You need two monsters, but now you just need an Orcus monster. So that's gonna spell game one very fast. We're gonna head right into game two, and our Orcus player's first turn was so quick, you you just you might have missed it if you weren't paying attention. Set one pass. The rocket ship player now starting off with quick launch. Pretty good card. Gonna be able to summon out any rocket monster from his deck. It will be destroyed during the end phase, but of course you don't really care too much if your rockets get destroyed during the end phase. If they do get their effects. Gonna summon out Rocket Tracer, and I believe gonna follow it up here with a normal summon, but uh, as he does that, I want to mention, if you guys are picking up anything off of TCG Player, whether it be singles or sealed product, don't forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below, it'll help support me. Uh, if you buy anything using that link, um, I will receive a small portion of the revenue from your purchase, so it does go a long way to help me out. So if you want to help me out just by you know picking up cards normally on TCG Player, feel free to use that link, it'd be greatly appreciated. So. He does end up going into Time Thief Redoer, opting not to go for Abyss Dweller. Feels as maybe that would be a bit too greedy with the field that he has, as weak as it is. If that Dweller can be broken, he might be left out of luck here. But going for the Redoer, he'll take a monster off the top. Probably not what he was looking for. Although getting a trap in this situation against Orcus is very unlikely, since he only plays one or two at most. Twin Twister being clutch here to discard that Orcus Nightmare. He's going to go ahead and chain that Trap Trick now, and he's also going to chain the Time Thief Redoer to get off the board. Seeing that his opponent has discarded that Orcus Nightmare, he's basically putting up into the, you know, in the hands of the Orcus player, saying, if you don't have a monster to put on board, I'm not going to give you one, so you have to put a monster on board to be able to even resolve your Orcus Nightmare. So basically calling his bluff at this point, and, uh... Going to set now, interestingly enough, set that impermanence in the same column as our other opponent's set. And, um, yeah, bit of a heads up play here. You guys will see this. So, one player trying to mind game the other with sort of the column scheme you can get from impermanence. Uh, so, Redoer will come back. He'll take the Harp Horror off the top of the deck. And, uh, interestingly enough, also, the Redoer actually helping him out here in this matchup by getting these Orcus cards off the off of his deck onto the field and later into the graveyard just by using Redoer here. It's a bit of a slow way to do it, but it is helping him out nonetheless. Tracer will go ahead and destroy that Cosmo Town and summon out another rocket from the deck. Um, I believe that is ro uh, Magna Rocket Dragon. Um... There is a bit of a glare, and I do apologize, but I believe it is Magna Rocket Dragon, which has 1,800 attack. And then, of course, Cosmotown, upon destruction, will go ahead and add that copy of the Wind Can from deck to hand. So, as it stands, with having 5,600 here, um, you know, from that first attack from the Redoer, if all these attacks go through, uh, it is game over. But luckily, he was able to see the Babel. And uh, that will basically turn any Orcus in his graveyard into a quick effect. And he does have Nightmare. Probably the best one you could have. Uh, because that can dump a card like Gizmek Orochi to the graveyard. So he'll take the 18 from the Magna Rocket Dragon. And then he'll, after on the next attack, he'll chain the Orcus Nightmare. To go ahead and dump any Dark Machine from deck to grave. He'll target the Magna Rocket. Doesn't care if it gets boosted by 800. As it has already attacked at this point. So strategically waiting in the wakes here. And the other attack will go ahead and chain that Gizmeka Rochi to be able to effectively block the attacks from both the Rocket Tracer Dragon and the Time Thief Redoer. That 50 extra defense here coming in clutch, keeping him out of harm's way, at least for the time being. Uh, so our uh, Rocket Ship player, again, does have another possibility at a rank 4 play. I'm not sure if there's any restrictions he's under at this point. But opting to just go into Wee Witch, uh, I feel as though maybe... Again, Dweller is a bit of an interesting choice because he does have the Gizmak already established. He doesn't really care about Dweller too much. I'll take another Orcus off the top. It's going to be Symbol Skeleton. And as the Orcus player, you really don't have too many options at this point. Uh, but to go ahead and force out the Redoer. Because it's either a use it or lose it. He's going to chain Impermanence. And that Impermanence that the Orcus player has been holding on to. Uh, trying to shut off... Uh, the other impermanence with the impermanence so both impermanences will just go ahead and cancel out um so it'll allow the gizmak to go through and it'll allow the redoer to go through as well uh putting a symbol and a harp horror in the graveyard and at this point if you're the rocket player you're kind of feeling like you're in danger just a little bit mathematician following things up here uh, gonna go ahead and send a harp horror i believe and um summon out a symbol 
and not a symbol. Going for a nightmare. Already has symbol in graveyard, so changing up targets here. Perfectly understandable. Going for Galatea now. Checking the grave. A lot of rockets in grave. Not a lot of cosmos, but checking targets that he could possibly recur back with that Wii Witch. Definitely want to try and secure a game at this point because he will get a free card back. But again, it's not that big of a deal since there's really no. Uh, large threats in the graveyard other than a few rocket monsters. I don't really think he has any Cosmos in grave as of yet. Was debating on using Orcus Nightmare there, but wants to link off first to get more value out of that attack boost since he is getting the uh, attack boost benefit from that Wii Witch. Everything already being boosted by 5. Might as well make his Long Gears 2 a bit stronger by dumping that Wonder Wand or World Wand to the graveyard. Uh, boosting it by an additional 8 plus 5, putting it up by a total of 1300 right now. Putting it up to 38. Symbol's going to go ahead and revive out Galatea. And he's going to go ahead and use Wonder Wand here to summon out, or the World Wand, I keep calling it Wonder Wand, to summon out Nightmare. We did see him set that orchestrated return, so giving himself a, uh, a set draw power, uh, you know, draw outlet. Um, going to attach the uh, World Wand here instead of Symbol Skeleton. Uh, but I'll allow him to recur regardless uh, next turn, the Symbol. And uh, going to send away the Nightmare and go ahead and draw two. Looks like he picked up a copy of Super Poly and Armageddon Knight, as well as a copy of Rhoda in hand, too, I see. And uh, at this point, he has a 3800 Long Gear suit, and he's going to be able to attack over that 1900 Wee Witch. So he'll take 19 as a result, and then he'll take 26 from the Ding Gear suit. Just there. Dropping him down to 35, so life points about equal here. Gonna check the graveyard. Graveyard looking pretty loaded. There is a Gizmak, there is a Nightmare, I believe a Harp Horror as well. End phase that uh, Redoer will come back. He's gonna take a spell off the top this time around, so that's definitely what he was looking for. Better than a monster at this point. He's been giving him Orcus monsters practi practically this entire game so far here in game two. So he'll take that extra draw if he can get it. But is it enough? Two set back row. That, cl that, that, that impermanence battle earlier was very, very interesting. Cosmo player thought he could trap check the impermanence into the column that that other impermanence was in at the time. He didn't know what it was, but the fact that the impermanences were able to cancel themselves out. Uh, interesting uh, interaction there. So, Tin Can is going to try to activate here. And he's going to chain the Lancia to that. So, he can still summon off of it. He does have Dart Destroyer and Slip Rider in hand, but... Uh, any of those effects going through will just not be worthwhile because he has Dingirsu, and if he goes, you know, you know, destroy his own Dart Destroyer, he can't even tag out because he's under Lancia. So the Lancia will spell defeat there. Uh, may not be the best time because, you know, he could still chain the Tin Can. Um, has to do it in response to the Tin Can, which is already banished, but luckily the targets he had left in his hand were very uh, unoptimal. And um, the Cosmo player opting to go first here. He's going to shotgun the Lancia to turn off the Tin Can. Because probably at this point needing the Tin Can to resolve first to be able to banish. So, uh, luckily enough, the Lancia here will uh, help slow him down somewhat. But again, even if you wait to hold the Lancia next turn, you're letting this go through. And then the, the Tin Can can just chain. But you do turn off any effects that would float for the rest of the turn. So, there is a, perhaps a reason to hold the Lancia. But I don't know if it makes too big of a difference. Because regardless, he doesn't really need to tag out during his turn. Uh, it would be much better to sort of spring it on his opponent as sort of a surprise. Now, he goes for Monster Reborn. And his opponent, I believe, will tag out into the Dark Destroyer. And going for the Slip Rider. Now... He does have to target first uh, before he can chain the Tin Can. So, I mean, maybe it's a bit too heads up to go for the uh, Dark Lady. Because it is a Dark, and if he does have a couple copies of Super Poly in his hand, unfortunately enough, uh, you would be able to Super Poly for Mud Dragon right now. But he Super Poly is right now, and this is actually a bit of a misplay here, uh, because he technically cannot resolve Super Poly because he thinks he can go for Mud Dragon, but Mud Dragon requires the same type or, or yeah same type but or same attribute but different types uh so cannot unfortunately do that here uh so they're gonna go ahead and repair the game state and things will go ahead and resolve as they should um cosmojo destroying and uh or banishing the lancia from grave 
and destroying the slip rider uh, and and dark destroyer destroying itself uh, or vice versa dark destroying uh, dark destroyer destroying the slip rider and Cosmojo destroying his dark destroyer etc etc so either way you're gonna resolve a whole bunch of effects here and at this point maybe you're hoping you held on to the Lancia because again even if he does chain the tin can to it you're shutting off a lot of effects might be a bit heads up but it is what it is. Uh, very unfortunate circumstance that the uh, you kind of have to make the better call. I feel like if you go for the Dark Lady, you have the option to negate uh, effects. So if he does try to chain the Tin Can to it, uh, it's fine. Um, because if whatever he summons off it tries to activate, in fact, you at least have a negate. And if it's going to be a Dark Monster, which in most uh, cases it's probably going to be that Dark Destroyer, which is a Dark, your super probably at least does become live. But you'll get to summon two off here regardless straw man and the um i forget what that one is uh but uh the level five he does have another super poly in hand here so he is still able to use super poly here in the end phase when he tries to resolve a bunch of facts and a bit of another misplay happening here he should go for starving venom since there were two darks and two machines uh so that should 100 percent be a starving venom not a mud dragon of the swamp uh so i want to make that clear Shotgunning another Lancia here in the standby phase of his opponent's turn. Starting off with Straw Man. He'll pay 5, I believe, to go ahead and summon out Slip Rider. And then pay an additional 8 to go ahead and add back Dark Destroyer. Going into battle, he'll kill the Mud Dragon with the Slip Rider and attack for 500 with the Straw Man. Not much else he can do here. He is under Lancia, so he cannot banish cards this turn. So, the straw man will be a bit of a nice interaction, though, uh, for the next turn, because he does have that Dark Destroyer in hand still that he added back. Uh, he'll draw for turn, and he, I believe, will just pass now. So, end phase, we're going to start seeing some shenanigans, uh, going for the Dark Destroyer to destroy itself, to summon out Slip Rider, to pop the other set card, uh, which was that other copy of Super Poly, not doing him a whole lot of good here. Gonna get started with the Cosmo Town, putting back that Win Cannon to the deck to draw an additional card. And gonna pay 200 here to add back another Straw Man. And uh, gonna replace a Cosmo Town with another Cosmo Town to pay an additional 8 to add back the Dark Destroyer. And then I'll summon out a Cosmo Straw Man to summon out another Straw Man. And I'll swing in for 500, 523, which will drop him down quite a bit. And he'll summon Dark Destroyer to destroy his Slip Rider, and Slip Rider will summon, and that will prove to be game. Uh, so it is a bit of an unfortunate, cir unfortunate circumstance that he uh, he did have the bricks uh, in game three. He just had double Super Poly. Uh, it, it, it was just unfortunate. I'm going to like double Super Poly, double Lancia, and like one other card. It was just a very bad hand, um, which of course does not help. When all it takes is for your opponent to have something like, uh, you know, uh, a straw man or a tin can, which he was able to see tin can, I believe, almost every game, I think, every game, uh, regardless. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Orcus uh, losing there to a very interesting deck. Not really unfortunately, but a uh, very interesting deck, uh, sort of crafted out of nowhere. The rocket ship deck, taking the match 2-1. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop me a like, leave a comment down below. On your thoughts and uh yeah don't forget to join discord uh follow me on twitch um all that good stuff thank you guys so much for watching as always winter kills signing out we'll see you guys in the next one